All right, so after yesterday's atrocity with the quote-unquote stable release of Kira 4.2 and the fact that it would not let you slice if you used regular supports no matter what, uh, I've decided to go ahead and give a shot to another free slicer, the Prusa Slicer. Now, this is like the slicer slicer, uh, but as you can see, I got Simplify 3D too, but not, not a big fan of Simplify 3D. I prefer Kira to that, but with Kira being so buggy right now, I'm going to give this a shot. Um, I did already set up a profile and get everything I think dialed in how it's supposed to be. Um, and I will run a test print and I will show you how that test print comes out. All right, so I brought my model in. To add a model, you click right here. Uh, and the scale I was changing in Kira to 75%. I change one, it scales all of them. That's great. Uh, I have supports turned on, my infills turned on. I'm not using a brim right now. Um, and I'm going to leave it like that. We'll see how well it does. Actually, no, let's put a brim on there because it's it's a little bit taller than it is. It's quite a bit taller than it is wide, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to hit slice now. Uh, not really having any, any problems with my objects so far. Uh, they've all come in manifold. There is an option in here I noticed to fix your uh, repair STL file. I haven't tried that yet. I'm not sure what that does. Okay, so there we have it. There we have our breakdown. Uh, pretty smooth, pretty fluid. It was pretty fast actually. Uh, and I can scroll through the layers just like this. I did set uh, honeycomb infill. There's lots of cool infills you can try with this. Uh, we'll experiment with those as we get into this slicer as well. Um, like I said, if this printer, if this print comes out even somewhat decent, uh, basically we'll do a whole tutorial series on using this with your Ender 3 because um, that's what I'm doing right now and that's what I think a lot of people will be doing once they get sick of Kira and their bugginess. All right, so this was my first official print with the Prusa Slicer. Um, as you can see, it looks a little bit rough. Um, but this was an initial run with without changing most of the settings that are in there and I didn't notice if you look um, the layer height was set at 0.3 so it cranked this model out it actually did a really good job at 0.3 the layer lines are a little too obvious for me and you can see right in here um, that the support was a little bit too thick so I had a little trouble removing it now the support has a skin of its own and you can determine how many layers thick that is. Um, in the beginning it was set to three and with that coupled with the uh, thickness of 0.3 millimeters it was really really tough to remove. So this model ended up looking a little rough um, and because of that I ended up annealing it in some boiling water to kind of remove some of the uh, the burrs and the discolored spots where the support had not quite broken away properly. Uh, it also caused this item to change color quite a bit and you can see that compared to the next model I printed I did go in um, and I adjusted the layer height now these are pawns for my for my Egyptian chess set so there are several of them so it's perfect for doing test print prints and, and comparisons I'm not actually going to use the first print I'm not happy with the the layer height it's a little bit too uh, uh, chunky but these ones are at 0.16 um, after a couple adjustments and they came out pretty fine I'm actually very happy with these so um, I do also have the last one that I printed I haven't quite removed the support because I wanted to show you that skin that I'm talking about now if you look here uh, really closely you can see that right here there's a little line going across there uh, and that line, let's shine a little light on this here. That line, that little white line you see right there is where the skin is. So basically, that skin allows you to remove the support without leaving any support attachment marks on the model. So after reducing that skin to one, I have had immensely better luck not only with the uh, support removal but with as you can see here uh, you can see his clavicle and his collarbone uh, whereas with this one with the the rougher support um, you can still see some of the support dug in there so uh, 
like I said, here you can see the color difference a little bit better. Uh, this red color turned this this nice brownish bronze, um, but it still has the glint to it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to end up annealing all of these parts uh, to make them just to make them this color. Um, I'm probably just going to finish printing them and, and peeling them and, and enjoy them how they are because I do like the red. Uh, but so far, Prusa Slicer has been a great success for me. Now I've printed one, two, three, four models with my good profile plus the fifth original model, which I consider a test model to get my profile dialed in. Uh, so uh, that's four models that I've printed compared to probably the, the hundreds, probably close to a thousand I've printed in Kira. So um, got a long way to go before I can say that I like this better than Kira, but at the moment it functions better than Kira and the supports actually work. So uh, definitely gonna recommend you give, you give this slicer a try. I'll put a link to it down below. Um, and then I think we're going to do a little tutorial series on how to use it and uh, what some of the better settings are. The infill options with this slicer are amazing. I did this one in honeycomb and watching it print with the honeycomb infill is like mesmerizing. So definitely stay tuned for the tutorial series we're going to do on Prusa Slicer. Between now and then, uh, definitely recommend giving it a shot. There is a little bit of a learning curve as with any slicer but the options are pretty, pretty serious. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with this. So um, if you're into being able to customize your G-code uh, easily, if you're into <laughs> printing anything with support on a new version of software, uh, definitely check out the link below. So thanks guys. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if it was helpful at all. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, to stay tuned for future videos. Ring that bell and you'll get notifications when we put up our tutorial updates for the slicer. And we look forward to seeing you next time.